Hi everyone, my name is Salafteris Tertafilidis and I'm a second year PhD student at the University of Edinburgh. Today we're presenting one of our latest work and that is the challenges in modeling human performance in 3D space with FITS's original formulation. With a recent spike in technology, particularly that seen in VR, AR and MR, overall immersion has increased. Stereoscopic vision and multimodal interfaces have given us a new definition of immersion, increasing overall human performance and rendering virtual environments and simulators very realistic. Interacting nowadays, for example, with 3D user interfaces and moving in 3D space is now feasible. Uh, Multi-user collaboration, especially training humans on simulators, is just one of the applications where increase in immersion has really helped us in making a real-life impact. Uh, however, with um, all of the aforementioned, the need to measure human performance has exponentially increased. Uh, assessing, for example, new methods, concepts and emerging technologies require us to evaluate with a concrete approach human performance and human movement. Um, there's a lot of different methods to do so. Um, ranging from spatial to time-related metrics. However, with the absence of a standardized metric, interstudy comparisons and transferability, most importantly, um, is very limited and severely difficult. Uh, because with the different methods one can use and across a multitude of different studies, finding the same metric in each of them is very, very difficult. So a fundamental question comes in mind, can we really measure and standardize a human performance metric? A possible solution to this um, endeavor is to actually use FITS's original formulation, um, short for FITS's law. It's a human predictive model uh, proposed by Paul FITS, has been extensively uh, researched and focused on. Um, but what does it actually do? Well, the law predicts the time required to move a generic cursor to a target on a screen. This time required is also known as movement time and is represented as a function of the ratio between the distance to the target and the target's width. Uh, this is also known as index of difficulty. A simple example is to show actually the equation of Fitz's law, which is a simple line equation uh, with the index of difficulty represented as a logarithmic ratio between the distance of the target and the target's width. Uh, imagine a very simple example where we want to close a window dialog of a a generic uh, window on our screen, the distance the cursor had to travel would be A, and to close the button, i.e. the button X, uh, it would be represented as a size W. This is how Fitz's law would work in its very simple scenario. Now, of course, there's a lot of extension of Fitz's law, um, and this table in particular is just uh, a very brief example of these um, extensions. You can have a look at our paper for more information. Um, this, uh, in here, we just summarize uh, the equations of each one, so the movement time and the index of difficulty, which is the part which is mostly extended, and also the model characteristics of each formulation, whether it's applicable in 2D space or 3D space, and certain special criteria one would have to take into account. The problem here, as we said, is simplicity. Uh, full 3D space is quite complex, and we need to take into account multiple aspects. Uh, one of them is dimensionality, spatial arrangements, combining translation with rotation, and the challenges that lay ahead. If we start with the most um, easy example, uh, considerations for interactions in 3D, is whether we're talking about translation or rotation. Most methods to date have only focused on translation, and Fitz's original formulation was intended for one-dimensional translational tasks exclusively, um, but there has been an extension towards rotation which is fundamental, and everyday object handling uh, in our lives is dependent upon both, so these separate concepts of motion need to be taken into account. Um, another thing to take into account is also whether we are talking about pointing or manipulation. To this date, all models have exclusively uh, focused on pointing, yet manipulation, and that is uh, with the presence of physical quantities such as friction, gravity, and forces, is also very important to take into account. And here a question arises whether we can model both types of interactions within um, just one formulation of Fitz's law, whether that can be combined under uh, one unified metric. Uh, the, some challenges and frontiers that lay ahead are um, depth perception in virtual environments, uh, the evaluation approach is, uh, used in existing work, um, the human factors, which is a very important uh, factor to take into account, and also the physical influences, grasping types, and even input devices one can use, um, and the multitude of different uh, approaches one can actually initiate in a study. Um, there, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, information to take into account when extending it to 3D space, but we hope with our paper uh, we can uh, simplify this and hope to assist readers. Um, thank you all very much for your time, and we're looking forward to your questions. Thank you.